has its roots in an earlier poem done in 1899. And there has been an interesting theme of how to go view women and the place in society. And we'll share this with you in a little while. But the most important thing is that three of his major dance dramas, Shama, Jitangada, Chandalika, all of these have women as the protagonists. Now, if you look back to 5th century BC, you have, I think, playwrights, writings, Sophocles, you look at this. We have Oedipus, whose tragic flaw is celebrated in that, um, in that uh, lovely play. But imagine the tragic flaw in Jocasta, his father. I mean, nobody has done anything like this. We have seen Hippolytus, where women are protagonists, but they refer to primarily what is seen as a women, woman's context. But Tagore goes several steps further, employing women protagonists as the representative of the human person, not in a, in a merely feminine sense, but as every man. In Chitrangala, again, we will see, and you'll see in the, in the dance drama, how he also celebrates several other very important issues. Chitrangala was born a princess, uh, trained as a prince, dressed as a prince, and when Arjun rebuffed her, she felt that she was lacking in quote-unquote feminine traits. And she went to Anangadeva, the Lord of Love, God of Love, and borrowed for a year the traits of feminine beauty. Where, and then when she presented herself to Arjuna, to the of Love. But the whole narrative takes us through through an evolution where we recognize then that Tagore celebrates beauty not in its external sense, but draws our attention to the inner beauty of a human person where Arjuna then aspires to know the Chitrangada, the, warrior, the, the princess, rather than Chitrangada, the lover. And at that point, Chitrangada reveals herself to Arjuna. And what does she say? And this is particularly important because that gives us an idea of where Tagore places uh, uh, his, or, or talks about his, his understanding of a woman's place. He says, I am Chitrangada, Princess Royale. Not a goddess to be placed on a pedestal and worshipped, not a mere somebody to be left behind. If you keep me by your side in prosperity and adversity and share it with you, your deepest then will be known. 1936. And the world comes together in 1993 at Vienna, at the World Human Rights Conference. The Vienna Declaration and Program of Action recognizes that all human rights are mutually reinforcing and dependent. But most importantly recognizes that women's rights are human rights. And so more places women in that place in 1936. And that talks about the enduring relevance of Tagore here in the 21st century and beyond. Chitrangada <clears throat> also is, uh, is, is, is interesting because it has, um, in terms of how, how it is composed, the narrative, and we, we recognize how, how Tagore describes, sets, sets the sets the stage, so to speak. Um, he's always been very lyrical, even in his dance, uh, in, in his play, Bishotto, The Sacrifice, he says there is much too much of the lyrical than the dramatic. But we'll see how he creates the dramatic flow. The play, the, the dance drama begins with Chitrangala and the friends out on a hunting chase. And there they run into Arjuna who is doing penance. But the, the atmosphere is created. Uh, not so much in simple visual description, the, the hills and the terrain, but also creating, embellishing this with auditory about the 
hunger and, and how the, the deer are running out of the way and leaving their, leaving their footprints. And you'll see that itself it gives you a very interesting understanding of how Tagore employs all his creative uh, talents to build that. Um, <clears throat> in Chitrangada, um, and, and if we move on to the other two, Shama and, and uh, Chondavita, where again he uses his, uh, a woman as a protagonist for every man. In Shama, we see how Bhattacharya, the, the man, is sublimated because of, of the action uh, of Shama, where, where he says, I could, I could not forgive you, forgive my unforgiveness. Because I know your sin will be forgiven, but God will not forgive my incapacity to forgive. This, because um, uh, uh, Uttyo, a uh, silent admirer of Shamas, was, was sacrificed, killed, uh, in a ruse to save Bodhisattva by Shama. And when Bodhisattva came to know about this, he felt an outrage. But then he realized, he realized, the, and makes us realize the deeper, <coughs> the deeper nuances of justice and, and, and the value of forgiveness as opposed to retribution. And there we see how Shama the courtesan also touches the life and the sensibility of this, this, this merchant, Bostushen, who realizes then that there's something more than forgiving and punishing. And that in the eyes of, of God, uh, somebody who has sinned will be forgiven, but somebody who is unforgiving may not be forgiven. I will not talk about Chitrangada, you will, you will see for yourself. Um, uh, Chitrangada takes place in Manipur. It's in the, uh, it's taken from the Mahabharata. Arjuna is in his, uh, his 12 year penance. He's, 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 he's in Manipur. Manipur is in the in northeastern <coughs> India as well as Bangladesh. It's part of Salat and, and Manipur. And uh, there is a, also a very interesting uh, genre of dance. It's called Manipuri dance. Um, that comes from there, but of course, in this performance, I understand it's a, it's a, it's a different uh, school that's been done, but uh, very Tagore-esque, how Tagore harnesses indigenous as well as external influences in giving his narrative in choreography. Um, I'm sure uh, the Chatterjees will be able to take questions and explain at length the production, and I leave that to them and to you, but may I, in my humble way, invite you to enjoy Thank you very much.